DC-10 Series 30 is a three-engine, wide-bodied jet transport. The Series 30 is easily identified by the third main landing gear located under the center fuselage. Under standard day conditions of 15 degrees centigrade at sea level, it can operate from runways of 2,570 meters with gross weights of more than 252,000 kilograms. Maximum sea level takeoff thrust on a standard day is 22,700 kilograms per engine, or a total of 68,100 kilograms for all three engines. The airplane is designed for route segments from 400 kilometers to nearly 10,000 kilometers. Cruising speed is approximately Mach 0.85 and an altitude of 8,900 meters. The Series 30 is powered by the CF6-50 high-bypass fan jet engines built by General Electric. Engine noise and smoke levels are appreciably less than with earlier jet engines. Horizontal stabilizer span 21.5 meters. Height to top of vertical stabilizer, 17.5 meters. Airplane overall length, 56 meters. Clearance between the bottom of the fuselage and the ground is 2.2 meters. This permits most towing vehicles to operate either forward or aft of the nose gear. Work platforms or ladders are required for most maintenance. To turn the airplane using engine thrust and normal nose wheel steering requires a minimum of 43 meters of pavement width for a 180 degree turn and 75 meters for wingtip clearance. There are four passenger doors on each side of the cabin for a total of eight exits. Passenger doors are normally operated electrically. Each door also has an independent pneumatic system for emergency opening, and manual actuation is also possible. The left forward passenger door may be opened and closed manually from the outside with a speed wrench at this location. On early airplanes, it is located here. In addition, this lever replaces the emergency override button at each passenger door. On the right side of the fuselage, there are two doors for the computerized cargo compartments. The larger one accesses the forward cargo compartment, and a slightly smaller door, the center cargo compartment. On the left side of the fuselage is the aft cargo door for the bulk cargo compartment. The convertible freighter model of the DC-10 has, in addition, a large cargo door on the left side leading into the forward passenger cabin. The upper fuselage of the DC-10 includes the compartment. There are seats for the three-man crew plus two observers. The passenger cabin is divided into three compartments. The airplane can carry from 250 to 345 passengers plus 11 cabin attendants. Specific arrangements of seating, location of galleys, lavatories, and other facilities may vary with using airlines. Emergency equipment for the crew and passengers includes first aid kits and portable oxygen bottles, various types of fire extinguishers, fire axe, cockpit crew escape lines, emergency lighting controls, portable megaphones, emergency radio beacon transmitters, and life vests under each passenger and cabin attendant's seat. Evacuation slide rafts are incorporated in each of the eight passenger doors. When required, Slide raft deployment is a function of the door operating sequence. The lower fuselage compartment arrangement of the DC-10 is as follows. Avionics, air conditioning, 
forward cargo, center accessory, main gear wheel wells, center cargo, aft cargo, aft fuselage, auxiliary power unit, aft accessory compartment, and tail cone. The three cargo compartments provide a total volume of approximately 132 cubic meters. For containerized cargo and baggage, they can contain nearly 45,000 kilograms. The DC-10 airplane systems are conventional as compared to previous aircraft. However, as the state-of-the-art advances, the systems tend to become more sophisticated. As a result, many of the airplane systems have their own self-test or fault detection systems to simplify troubleshooting and maintenance efforts. The DC-10 hydraulic system is composed of three independent systems. They use fire-resistant Skydraw fluid, or the equivalent, and operate at 3,000 pounds per square inch. Each system is identified by the number of the engine, which is its primary power source, and all components are color-coded. Number one left engine, system one, pink. Number two center engine, system two, yellow. Number three right engine, system three, green. There are two identical engine-driven variable displacement pumps on each engine for redundant primary hydraulic power. Two electrically driven auxiliary hydraulic pumps provide ground hydraulic pressure and backup in-flight pressure. The three parallel systems provide redundancy for the hydraulically actuated flight controls and landing gear subsystems. Additional redundancy is provided by two reversible motor pumps and by two non-reversible motor pumps which can mechanically transfer power from one system to another with no fluid interchange. The various hydraulic subsystems, such as flight controls, are served by one, two, or three of the hydraulic systems, thus providing each subsystem with at least one backup power source. Pilot inputs to the flight system are transmitted by a conventional system of mechanical linkages and closed loop cable systems to hydraulic actuators located at the control surface hinge points. Wing leading edge slats and trailing edge flaps provide lift augmentation for takeoff and landing. Outboard ailerons, all speed ailerons, and spoilers comprise the wing control surfaces. Lateral control or roll control is provided by a combination of ailerons and spoilers. The all-speed inboard ailerons and spoilers are used throughout the flight envelope. At low speeds, the outboard ailerons augment control. The spoilers are used alone as speed brakes for in-flight slowdown and as automatic ground spoilers for landings and rejected takeoffs. Directional, or yaw control, is provided by an upper and a lower double-hinged rudder. Four independent elevator segments control longitudinal or pitch attitude. The horizontal stabilizer adjusts up or down for longitudinal trim control and provides static stability. The landing gear subsystems that are hydraulically powered include the nose, center, and main gear extension and retraction, and all landing gear doors, nose wheel steering, and all brakes and anti-skid control systems. There is also a manually operated free-fall landing gear extension capability for both the center and main gear. The center gear free-fall lever is located in the floor at the right side of the flight engineer's seat. The main gear free-fall lever is located on the floor between the pedestal and co-pilot's seat. Cockpit indicator lights actuated by proximity switches Monitor all landing gear and main gear doors for proper and safe operation. Primary electrical power is AC. 
furnished by three full-rated 90 kVA engine-driven generators. Each is driven and controlled by a constant speed drive unit. For normal power distribution, all three generators operate in parallel. However, if required, they may be operated isolated. DC electrical power is normally provided by four transformer rectifiers and an airplane battery. Auxiliary AC electrical power is available from a fourth APU-driven generator identical to the engine-driven generators. The airplane battery and static inverter provide primary emergency power. Emergency power for long-term electrical failure is provided by a 20 kVA air-driven generator. While on the ground, electrical power can be provided by the APU or through the two receptacles on the ground power panel located under the nose section. The main receptacle powers the main AC buses and the galley receptacle powers the galley buses. Airplane pressurization, air conditioning, and anti-icing are provided by bleed air from the engines or from the onboard APU. There are two external pneumatic connectors at the forward left side. They may be used for such ground pneumatic functions as driving the air conditioning packs or engine starting if the onboard APU is not operating. The air conditioning system on the DC-10 services the flight compartment, main cabin, and avionics compartments. Temperature control may be either automatic or manual. It can maintain a comfortable environment on the ground using bleed air from the onboard APU to drive the three air conditioning packs. If bleed air is not available, Ground preconditioned air may be ducted into the air conditioning system through the connectors on the forward right side of the fuselage. Ice and rain protection systems help ensure all weather flight capability. Engine bleed air is used to thermally anti-ice the outboard wing slats, VHF-1 antenna, and each engine cold cowl inlet. Electrical heaters provide anti-icing protection for exterior windshield surfaces, pitot tubes, static ports, angle of attack sensors, and the total air temperature probe. Windshield rain dispersal is accomplished by electric wipers and a chemical rain repellent system. This switch controls the windshield wipers, this one the rain repellent system. The DC-10 pressure refueling defueling system comprises two adapters in each wing, approximately 4.5 meters outboard from the engine pylons. All adapters feed into a cross-feed manifold that is common to all tanks, the number one and number three main tanks, the number two main tanks, and the center wing auxiliary tanks. The refueling control panel is located with the two adapters on the right wing. There are no controls at the left wing position. Maximum required fuel pressure is 50 PSI plus or minus 5 PSI. Fueling through two adapters provides 4,732 liters per minute flow. All four adapters permit a flow of 6,057 liters per minute. A direct means of determining fuel quantities while on the ground utilizes the underwing fuel level indicating sticks. The airplane has an automatic flight guidance system and automatic throttle speed control system designed for all weather operation under category three. Full or partial automatic control is available during takeoff, climb, cruise, descent, and landing. Manual override by the flight crew is possible at all times. In the auto land mode, the flight guidance system is monitored by the performance and failure assessment monitor system known as PAFAM. The airplane is provided with long-range navigational and full-range communications together with their associated instruments and control systems. Air data, 
and vertical navigational equipment includes these instruments. True airspeed and static air temperature, total air temperature and thrust rating, mock and indicated airspeed, attitude director, radio altimeter, altimeter, marker beacons, and vertical speed. Directional navigation and communications equipment includes these instruments and control panels. VHF nav control panel, inertial navigation system control display panel, radio dual digital magnetic indicator, horizontal situation indicator, radio magnetic indicator, weather radar indicator, automatic direction finding control panel, weather radar control panel, air traffic control panel, selective calling, audio control panel, VHF communication control panel, compass controller, INS mode selector, and HF communication control panels. A separate multiplex passenger entertainment and service system is controlled by the cabin attendants at various panels throughout the cabin. This completes the introduction to the DC-10 Series 30 airplane.